Big Bar landslide was discovered in June 2019, and satellite imagery confirms that the event took place sometime late October or early November of 2018, a time when the heavily isolated part of the river is not actively monitored. This historic slide created a massive blockage, which saw 130,000 cubic meters of rock fall into the Fraser River, all at once. For perspective, that's an area 35 stories high and up to 18 stories wide, or the equivalent of 10,000 dump truck loads worth of rock. Now, wild salmon populations are unable to reach their final spawning destinations further up the river. This has been the absolute top priority for me and the department in British Columbia. It's why it has been the focus of my first trip and why I made sure to have Terry with me. Touring Big Bar with Minister Jordan, together with the department, and seeing the damage caused by the slide firsthand has helped us get a better understanding of the exact scale and how we need to deal and address the situation. The slide has created a major choke point in the Fraser River for spawning wild salmon. To save our salmon, we have to act now, which is why it's great to see boots on the ground and collaboration between the federal and provincial governments, industry, and First Nations. The last time a slide of this magnitude occurred along the Fraser was at Hell's Gate in 1913, as a result of work being done on the Canada Pacific Railway. Wild salmon stocks took a devastating hit, and science shows us that they have never really fully recovered. We can't let this happen again. More than 140 First Nations depend on the Fraser River spawn, and our most sensitive land and freshwater ecosystems in British Columbia rely on the essential nutrients that our wild Pacific salmon provide. First Nations have been engaged from the outset of the Big Bar landslide incident and remain an integral part of the planning, operation, and decision-making process. Their traditional knowledge is tremendously important, and First Nations personnel will be part of the on-the-ground activities during the coming months. Some people may ask, why can't we just pick up the rocks? To start, it's remote. Big Bar is located in a highly isolated part of the province, roughly 100 kilometers from our Joint Incident Command Post in Little Head. This makes safety a concern and it makes transporting equipment and personnel a significant challenge. Secondly, water levels matter. The winter months are the point at which the river has the lowest water levels and that gives us the opportunity to get the most work done. So what's happening on the ground? In the summer, volunteers and staff capture tens of thousands of salmon at multiple sites using oxygenated tanks and helicopters. They use these tools to relocate salmon past the slide to the portion of the river where they can spawn. Through early rock manipulation, a natural passage was restored in September with more than 30,000 fish swimming past the landslide in a single day. In less than a week, that number reached 140,000, and by the conclusion of the salmon run, 245,000 had naturally swum past the slide. We're now focused on improving that passage. The long-term fix will require sustained rock manipulation and the Government of Canada has awarded the contract to Peter Kewitt Sons ULC with the goal to have work completed by March of 2020. The great thing is, Kewitt has their Western Canadian operations based in Burnaby, giving them a regional advantage in dealing with the challenges posed by Big Bar. Over the past month, teams at Big Bar have been making steady progress. Drilling and scaling have continued at the slide site and large excavators have been successfully transferred to the site to extract rock and facilitate further in-river work. Over the last couple of weeks, crews blasted many of the boulders that were identified as critical for removal. Environmental monitoring continues to be carried out ahead of each blast. The hydroacoustic monitoring downstream of the slide did not detect any fish in the area before each blast, and no fish injuries or mortalities were detected following each blast. We're also putting into place contingency measures in case uh, natural passage could not be established. And I think it's also worth noting that since we started the 43rd Parliament, the first study undertaken by the Fisheries and Oceans Committee is one focusing on wild salmon. We're going to continue focusing on protecting and restoring wild salmon as we move forward. As we progress, we're going to keep you updated on the major milestones achieved throughout the next phases of the work. To stay up to date, keep in touch with our office by following our social media accounts. You can also visit the Fisheries and Oceans Canada website or the Government of BC Big Bar Landslide background page. The future of our wild salmon populations depend on the action we take right now. We can't afford to be idle. This is a defining moment for our province, and the success we have dealing with this issue will greatly affect the future of our ecosystems. Working together and staying focused on our goal, we can save our wild salmon.